Hi guys and welcome back to At Home with Elisa. Today I am working on rescuing one of my citrus trees that I have in our orchard area. When we moved here we were actually thinking that the area where the chickens were in would be a lovely orchard area and that we could plant fruit trees into the ground and they would just flourish and it would be beautiful and they could eat leftover fruit if it dropped. Um, um, that dream actually didn't become a reality. So in reality, um, we have clay in our orchard area and um, obviously fruit trees don't love clay, not to grow straight in really thick clay. We didn't realize that when we first moved here and we obviously need to remove them because of clay. I know that you can plant in some clay, but this is really quite thick clay. The second reason being is that um, we have seen it flood throughout that area. Um, some of the fruit trees have been up to a foot in water because right where I planted them, I planted them thinking that it was quite a lower spot in there. So I was thinking, oh, well, that'll be good because we generally deal with drought. And if we did have rain, the moisture would sit in the divot. However, we've had nonstop floods since we've moved here. I don't expect that obviously to always be the case, but with the clay being another problem, I think it's time to move it. And the third reason being is that we also have some very invasive grasses, invasive, 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 very invasive grasses in that orchard area. And they're basically just getting smothered. And fruit trees generally have um, their roots quite close to the surface. So they don't really like a lot of competition. And I found that it's just struggling. So this is the actual orange tree that I'm looking at moving. It's about waist height for me, but as you can see by the yellowing, it's not very happy now. Granted, I haven't actually given it um, as much love as what I probably could have, but I'm hoping by planting it in the actual garden area, I should have more luck. As you can see, it does have some fruit forming, but if you can see the ants on there, they are actually thriving off some black scale that I have in, in this tree. So that black scale will actually weaken the tree as well. So it is another reason why I need to move it. It's obviously just not very happy here. I did move a mandarin tree recently into um, out of this area and into our garden area and I gave it a good feed and it's got beautiful little fruit forming on it now. So I think it's time that I get this one out of the garden. And this here is what I think is a solution. Well, it's the one that I've come up with anyway. I have been planting some of our um, fruit trees into pots. However, I haven't been able to find a pot that will actually stand the test of time. I've been planting them in wine barrels and I know I'm only gonna get two, maybe three years out of that. Whereas this is actual a steel product, it's caught in steel. And I know that obviously it's going to last a lot longer. So my theory is, is that obviously I, it's a tree guard essentially, but I need to close that gap up here, which just does by doing it up. I just need to move some of the seedlings that are in the way, but I can just put it into the ground a little bit, level it off, and essentially it's going to act like a big planter box. So the tree will be able to work its roots down into the soil at the base, and I'll probably only fill it up maybe about three quarters with soil and plant it and mulch it heavily. So that is my plan for putting it into this garden. Now this garden does flood as well, which is not ideal. However, I only have seeds planted in this garden. So this is purely my seed only garden bed. All these plants here are actually just grown from seed because it does flood and I did have dahlias here and obviously you don't want to lose a lot of dahlias um, because they're a tuber and they're a lot harder to replace, but seeds, I can just germinate more seeds. So by having the tree raised here, raised above, I have seen it flood about 15 centimeters high over this whole entire garden bed. Again, I don't expect that we'll always have that weather. It was really a once off, I hope, <laughs> maybe a twice off <laughs> if that exists, but I don't think that it's always going to be an issue, but I'm just trying to take the precautions that if it is, then at least I'm protected. So I have done a little bit of research regarding transplanting um, citrus trees, just citrus trees in general, and I'm looking forward to actually getting in and getting it done. I started by putting the trees around together. I really love the look of this caught in steel. I love the finishes in my garden of the black painted wood, beautiful sandstone, and mixing in some caught in steel. I love the rusted look. 
Then it came time to remove some of that grasses that I was saying, those invasive grasses. I had some right where I wanted to put my tree surround. So I dug those up and I'd also had a seedling, a little zinnia seedling, so I just transplanted that out of the way. So it gave me a nice clear spot to put my tree surround. It took me a little bit of time to actually get the tree surround level. I just wanted it to be as level as it could so that water and soil would sit in it properly. Um, but it is quite a slopey site so it took a little bit of time. I ended up just digging it out and burying in the high side so that it was about level. Just here I'm using a product called Seasol. It's a seaweed tonic and it will help with transplant shock. It helps the roots to be able to deal with the stresses I suppose of, of transplanting. Those invasive grasses have gone right up to the tree trunk unfortunately. I did originally have it planted and I had a large surround of thick newspaper and those rocks that you can see in the background. The rocks were just there to keep the chickens from scratching at the newspaper and getting to the tree roots. But the grass just overtook everything so I'm so glad that I'm doing this and getting it out. It definitely was a challenge getting it out of the ground. The roots had taken, but the soil was so, so thick and so sodden with water. I'm really glad that I managed to get it out. As you can see, Georgie and Karen, our chickens, were there to help. <laughs> I'm just pulling off all of the grass roots that actually got, dam got entangled and just soaking it in that seaweed solution. Just while that was soaking, I started preparing where I wanted to plant. So I added in some compost, some cow manure, and a little bit more compost and soil. Really wanted to give it the best start that I could. And I put a garden stake in just before I actually added in any more soil, just so that then I could make sure I wasn't actually damaging any of the roots. So I kind of made sure that that post made its way through the roots and around them, not actually crushing any or damaging any. Then I just poured over the rest of that seaweed solution and I thought well I'll give it a nice mulch so that it does have as much protection as it can being in a hot metal container in the sun. I wanted to make sure that I mulched it and that it would be nice and healthy and happy and I thought well I might as well do the rest of the mulch on this garden because it will make it look so much nicer. Okay guys so I finally finished it took a little bit longer than expected I think gardening projects usually do <laughs> but I'm really happy with the outcome let's have a look okay guys so this is the finished product I am so happy with how this garden bed is looking in the front here I just have my yellow and white poached egg flowers and I also have every second plant is a bunny's tail which would be really really good for some um, some filler when it comes to making more bouquets at the back I've got the cosmos and straw flower and I have just there is a chocolate cosmos and I have another one just there. The rest of them are just the pink and white ones that I've grown from seed. And I do have something else that I planted and I'm not entirely sure what it is. And the other thing that I have growing is zinnias. So these plants at the back here will actually grow quite tall, which I'm hoping that I can actually provide some um, protection for this steel here. I would like, obviously, the sun sets behind this garden bed, and I'd really like to protect it from some of the hot afternoon sun. So by having tall plants at the back of the garden, I think that's always going to help. So I'm not sure if you can see, but I do have some tiny little fruit here. Um, some of them, oh, one's just fallen off there. It may end up dropping all of its fruit this year just because I have transplanted it. Um, and I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, I'd rather keep it. So I have given it a lovely, lovely soak in sea sol. I poured all the rest of that seaweed solution onto it as well. And I will keep doing that over the next couple of weeks. And I also will be putting on some blood and bone as well. Oh, look, there's... 
There's a lovely little orange forming. I don't know if you can see that. So we'll follow up with Blood and Bone because I'm actually due to do all of my citrus plants um, with Blood and Bone this weekend. But I'm very, very happy with how it's turned out. I think it'll be a lot better off here. And I've just loosely tied a stake on. It's very, very loose. Like there's a lot of give because I still want the tree to be able to move. But we do get really strong winds up here. And just because it won't have the strength in its root system, I just wanted to stake it up and make sure it'll be okay. But all in all, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. I had been planning to do this for quite a while, so it's so nice to be able to have nice weather to do it. Um, I will, <laughs> this is from the flooding, so the path is actually washed away. We do have to do some work still with regards to the flooding, but hopefully this garden bed will be okay now. This is, I think, second or third time I fixed this garden bed for flooding so fingers crossed that season's over and we're just into nice weather now. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you've managed to pick up some tips on transplanting citrus trees. Um, it applies to all citrus. This one in particular is just a, I think it's a navel orange. It's a couple of years old. It's actually come with us from our original house so it's, it's moved a fair few times. Hopefully that's in its final location now. Thank you again for joining me today. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.